So, um, just to get a little context, this is four conversations. Um, so, I would really appreciate you guys, you know, raise your hand, ask questions in the middle, just about the beginning conversation. I do have slides, but they are mostly pictures. There is no, hardly any words in there. Um, so, the, what I want to do is that for the first 10, ten minutes, I want to give an introduction of what the, what, the, what the goal is. And that should give you context into what we're trying to do. And then, hopefully, uh, hopefully that will help you. Ask them, ask them, ask questions. <clears throat> so why did each other happen, right? So uh, I'm from Nepal. A lot of people, when I came uh, here in 1998, uh, I was I went to West Virginia for all, all, the, all, the, all the places. And when I was in West Virginia, people asked me where you're from. I would say I'm from Nepal. Of course, few people knew about it, but some people did not. So I would say it's the country of Mount Everest. So that would, that would, yeah, okay, that makes sense. But some people didn't even know where Mount Everest was. It was, it was West Virginia, right, of all the places. So then, uh, then what I found that, uh, that uh, MTV had done a show on the real world back in 1997-98. And I said, well, you know, this is the country where they saw the real world. There were lots of young kids would know, you know. So that's how I was able to introduce Nepal to, to my American friends in West Virginia. So, but it's a very small, tiny country for it. Uh, I'm sure all of you probably know. Maybe in India and China, um, you know, that's where Mount Everest is, that's where most of the Himalayas are, and it's also one of the poorest countries in the world. You know, it's very beautiful, I'm very proud of it, but it also is one of the poorest countries in the world. Just to tell you how poor it is, it is from the ranking of the poorest nation, it comes 19. To think that Bhutan and Bangladesh are, are more prosperous than Nepal, kind of sets you the expectation Number of people um, out of 100 population, 100 people who have internet users, uh, they are uh, that's close to 11 percent. Uh, I think that's mostly in Kathmandu, the capital. To go outside Kathmandu, there are some cities where you can get internet access, but it's pretty bad. And public spending of the school, and, uh, uh, sorry, government spending towards the public uh, education is, is very low. And the last, the most important is the child labor. That's very high, right? So how does how does this how does this enjoy, uh, enjoy tie into uh, this thing? <coughs> so that's part of Nepal, and this is very village called Sisotia. That's where I grew up. That's in the south part of Nepal, and that's a small tiny village that's about 10 kilometers from from um, uh, from our uh, border to India. That's where I grew up. So I was lucky, and that's another, another story how I came to all the way up to this, just just to study computer science, uh, but different story. But I did my undergrad here in West Virginia. I came to Austin awesome to uh, uh, for my master's in computer science. Then I started to find a job. And all, all this time, you know, it took about 10 years. You know, uh, I graduated and found a job. And I was going to Nepal back and forth all along. But back in 2009, when I went there, I, I saw this thing, you know. My village, this is how it looks like. You know, you, you see the electricity because that's when we got the wiring done, you know, in the electricity. But this is my village look like in 2009. I think it still looks like that as well. This is, this is one of the transportation modes uh, in 2014 as well. I think Scott is, is one of the volunteers of this thing. Uh, I'll, I'll introduce you later. He went there. I'm sure you don't mind going to see that. So uh, for you guys, probably it's not surprising because, because you are attending this list and you have seen uh, how the different parts of the world work. But this is where I grew up. And so when I went in, even in 2012, I still saw it, right? Uh, this is a nearby market. 
this is the time where you can find American whiskey, secret Marlboro cigarette, to almost everything. And this is but, but, but this is the infrastructure behind the nearest town. You know. This is how my mom and grandma still cook. Food, food is really delicious, but it takes a long time to cook, and it's really hard for them. You know. And you know, there are a lot of people who have to fight for the wood thing, you know, because the, 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 the trees are cutting down and things like that. You don't have the branches and all the to cook. This is how still people get light during the night. When I took this picture, the light was not enough, so I used my flash. And that's, that's how I would get a good picture of this girl. And this is one of the kids growing up in 2009 when I, when I, when I was there in my village uh, in one time. When I saw all these things, I realized that this is exactly how it was when I was in my village in 1980, or growing up in my high school. So almost in like 25 years, nothing has changed in terms of how kids went to school, how they learned things, the mode of how learning, uh, the kind of exposure they had to the rest of the world, all of this is very much the same. So I'm like, what can I do about this, right? Uh, there, there has to be something, whether it's a tiny, tiny scale, I should be able to make some difference. So that, that's what we came to. So what I did was that this is how lots of kids, you know, Anita, this is how I studied as well. So during the daytime, I'll go to the school, have my classes, have my classes, and have the curious and kind of questions. That's how you do the homework, um, memorize the poems, mathematics formula, and everything. So in one of those sessions in 2009, I just took my laptop and and just kind of tell them, hey guys, I have something to show you. So I was like, just see it. And just see the laptop, and you're just all over it. You know, just trying to try to touch it, feel it, very excited, right? And then I left the box. After showing this just to get feel of it. Just to make sure that it was not a temporary interesting laptop. Of course, kids are interested in toys, so they would have interested. But I want to make sure that they were still interested. So my brother, who works in Cash and I asked him to do the same thing to, 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 to different kids, uh, different sessions, and things like that. So this is a picture from one of the sessions. And as you can see, you have like five or six girls looking into one laptop and trying to catch and, you know, uh, and to get a feel of So, so that is about the interest. So all of this is that's why I asked him, if I were to open a place where you could experience computer a lot more friendly, where it could be a chance to learn it and be used, the majority of the kids in my district kids would say yes. So that was that was one of the data points on why I wanted to start um, um, this nonprofit. Another thing I realized that when I was going uh, when I did my high school in this school, um, high school, I had lots of friends. I realized that there are lots of friends who are smarter than me. They were able to solve mathematical formulas, arithmetic, geometry, a lot quicker than I was able to. You know? But out of 100 people who were in my 10th grade class, only five people went to do this, went to study more than 10th grade. Right? And then out of five, I think I was the one who ended up doing the graduate school, there's one more guy who is finishing his master's now. Right? So I, so I thought about it, and then I also observed this thing uh, across the different batch of the students. And I realized that the people who did well had resources, you know, and, are, and had guidance, right? So I thought, maybe, maybe this, is my, this is where I can help. But giving the resources, you know, to, to thousand plus kids is, is very difficult to solve. You can't do it in a small scale. You have to have you know, bigger organizations, bigger corporations, bigger governments. But really, unfortunately, I do see those things happening. Uh, but I thought I could help guys because uh, the reason I was able to continue on, I was motivated to study because my family understood the importance of the study and they were able to uh, go through the extra, extra thousand miles to make sure that I had proper education and whatever I wanted to do, I could do it. So I wanted to do the same thing with the rest of the students I could guide them in my way. So I said, okay, I, I would focus on the guidance, the guidance part of it. And so that, that becomes what you need to do. And I want to I want to show a video because that's what we um, that's what we ended up uh, doing. Um, 
I want to show the impact of running this thing in running a computer center in the top. This is too much bigger. So now it's again running out. that the schools that are doing a village 